What is going on guys? Jack here and today I have for you guys the first of hopefully a few January transfer FM simulates we're going to be doing here on my channel. If you've not seen one of these videos before, we look at transfer deals that have happened in real life, situations that are unfolding. We stick them in Football Manager, let the game work its magic and see what it predicts might happen and then you know, in hindsight, we can look back on what it predicted here and see how right or wrong it was. Today, we're going to be doing one of the biggest transfers, I guess, of this January transfer window. Jackson Martinez going to Guangzhou Evergrande in the Chinese Super League. As you can see here, the 29-year-old Colombian joining Guangzhou on a four-year deal. For his wages, it's just set at £71,000, although I believe it's been reported he's the fifth highest earning footballer in the world, which is absolutely crazy. The Colombian, 29 years old, of course, joined uh, Atletico from Porto only last summer in 2015. Six months later, he's moved for an estimated 43 million euros, I believe it is, working out at around 31 million pounds. A crazy sum of money paid, of course, going to the Chinese Super League, which has seen a few players move to it over the course of the last transfer window. If you'd like to see any of those transfers particularly played out a little bit like this one in a future Simulates video or any other transfers that have been going on, let me know which you'd like to see. It might be Pato at Chelsea, it might be Doombia at Newcastle. You know, get them down in the comments. I'll look at your suggestions. And if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to smash the like button. And uh, yeah, we're going to see how Jackson Martinez gets on here. I'm going to go forward a year. We're going to move to 2016, see how he fares in his first year in China and well, Hopefully, he can continue to lead Guangzhou to the success which, if we look at their history here, they're kind of used to at this point. So we are back here, guys. It's been a year. It's the end of the 2016 season in China. China's league runs between kind of uh, March time and then all the way through to November. So it's kind of a bit like MLS, unlike the European seasons, and they have a winter break. Looking at Jackson Martinez here, uh, he looks like he's done okay. He's made a few more appearances for Colombia. If we look here, it's going to tell us, I believe, maybe if we go to history. Uh, yeah, you can see here he made four goals, uh, scored four goals in nine appearances, four of which were on off the bench. If we look at his history here, you will we'll see it says he played in 2015 for Guangzhou. The reason for that being is that in Football Manager, you can't start a save at the start of 2016. So I started one in July. I moved into China prematurely. Uh, just so he was at the club and also to prevent kind of his form for Atletico pot potentially kind of affecting his value form and how he might get on. So anyway, looking at it here, 17 goals scored in 19 league games. But actually, I know for a fact that there's more games than that played in the Chinese Super League. So that's a little bit curious. He did get a 7.5 free average rating, three assists, four player of the matches. If we just look at his injuries... Uh, yeah, as I suspected, he was actually out for a little bit at the end of the year, really. Strained knee ligaments, stomach muscle injuries as well, contributed to 11 weeks out uh, in total, which is a pretty long period of time, really. How did Guangzhou get on without him? Well, you can see here they won the league the previous five years, but Philippe Sikolari, who is the Chinese Super League champions manager in real life, isn't here. So that doesn't bode well. Let's see how they got on. Chinese Super League, they actually finished second behind Shandong. And I believe Shandong is the team that Wagner Love, the Brazilian forward, uh, who some of you may be familiar with for having crazy hair, uh, but he played for them a few years ago now. So Guangzhou coming second to them. That's a little bit of a surprise. And looking at it, their goal difference of eight, particularly disappointing. You can see Guangzhou, they got 15 wins, 10 draws, five losses across their 30 games. They only scored 56 goals, which I say only, that is still the third highest in total in the league. Defensively, though, particularly poor. You can see here, in terms of goals conceded, they had the seventh worst defence in the league of the 16 teams. That is pretty poor, really, for a team who are doing as well as they are and should be doing as well as they are. How did they get on in the Champions League? Of course, they are in the Asian Champions League. They were in Group E. Let's take a look at how they got on in this. I believe they've won the Chinese, uh, oh, sorry, not the Chinese, the Asian Champions League two out of the last three years or something, or two out of the last five years it might be. But either way, a dominant force in Europe and actually or in Asia will get there eventually. Looking at it here, you can see they finished third in their group behind FC Seoul and also a Japanese team who I don't think I've got the real name fix installed, so that's probably not the right name for them. But either way, you can see, finishing third, that's going to be particularly disappointing. You can see they did win it in 2013, certainly. I have a feeling they may have even won it in 2015. But, of course, Football Manager doesn't go forward that far because, well, that season has literally only just finished. But either way, for Guangzhou, a disappointing year. If we look at their form, um, well, at the end of the season, they did start dropping a fair bit. They also lost in the Chinese FA Cup final, and they lost against... Uh, Henan Jianye, I guess that would be. 
They are a fairly new team to the Super League. You're looking at it here. They finished 13th, but they managed to win the FA Cup against Guangzhou. And that's going to be disappointing. Of course, Martinez missed that final. And he was out for the last few games. Although, by that point, they'd already missed out on the title. The amount of 1-1s they got was pretty disappointing. If we look at his injuries, he was kind of injured from August onwards, really. And if we look at... Uh, Guangzhou's form in that period I think we're going to see a distinct lack of goals and yeah you can really see from this Shandong game which he wasn't playing in so I assume he was injured at this point all the way through to here only a handful of games where they scored more than one goal which is particularly disappointing if we look at the Guangzhou team uh, and sort by goals uh, Goulart to be fair got 16 goals Gao Lin got 10 Martinez got 22 but then the next highest was 5 that's just not good enough. Not enough goals being scored by this Guangzhou side. And, well, Scolari paid the price. If we look at the landmarks here, he was sacked. And when was he sacked? Um, and I thought, I thought it would show here. I thought it would, Maybe we go to managers. Yeah, you can see here, Scolari sacked. He was actually sacked in October. So at the end of the year. And that is particularly bad, really. Either way, not a great first year, I think it's fair to say, for Jackson Martinez. Money not necessarily buying him success. We're going to go forward two years this time. We'll see how he's gotten over the previous two years for the 2017 and 18 season. Hopefully you guys stick around. And yeah, let's see how he did and how Guangzhou get on bouncing back from this very disappointing season. Okay, guys, so we are back again. The reason for me doing two seasons this time is just to speed things up. If we do a one year at a time, it can get a little bit slow, the video. Looking at it here, Jackson Martinez, 32 now. Not really showing much in the way of a decline for a 32-year-old, I think it's fair to say. Still got one more season left on his contract after this one. And uh, you can see here, 17 goals, 63 caps, 26 goals as well in the league. Let's see how Guangzhou got on last year. And if we look at the table, they actually finished second again. Particularly disappointing, although this time their manager did keep his job. Worth noting, Martinez, now the captain and key player for this side. But the question is, how did they get on in 2018? And looking at it here, they actually bossed the league. 74 points they finished up with. That's not a bad total, if we're being honest. If we just look at the stages here, you can see they scored 75 goals. That is a, a lot of goals to be scoring right there. Conceded only 28. Last year when they finished second, they only finished second actually by three points. Their Guangzhou rivals, however, beating them. That, that would hurt. That would hurt Guangzhou Evergrande for sure. A big dent in their pride right there. As they only got 59 points when you contrast that to the 74 points this year in 2018. That is a crazy return. But the question is, how, how has Martinez got on during the, his time here? And if we look, last year in 2017, he got 22 goals in 29 games. A 7.47 average rating, 6 man of the matches. And while this year, 2018, he has turned on the style. 26 goals in 28, of course. Uh, the team scored 75 goals, so he got almost a third of them in the league. Four assists as well, and six player of the matches. If we have a quick look at how Guangzhou have got on continentally, how have they done? If we look at 2017, uh, they reached the Chinese uh, FA Cup. Did they reach the final? They did, and they actually won it this time. So they, they won it in 2017 to bounce back. In terms of where they finished in the Asian Champions League, you can see they got knocked out in the second round. Oh, in fact, no, they didn't. They got knocked out in the quarter. No, they didn't. They made it for again. They lost it in the semi-final. We'll get there eventually. They scraped through on away goals and penalties a few times. A little bit confusing there. In the end, they lost to a Korean side. 3-1. Uh, if we just look here. A little bit disappointing. Pohang Steelers winning, winning it again. The team who they lost to, however, in the semi-final... Did go on to win it in 2017. Well, we've just seen they didn't win it in 2018. How did they get on? Looking at it here, they had a really poor year domestically, kind of in terms of the competitions they were in. It looks like they got knocked out of the Champions League very prematurely in the group stage again, which is not great really for them, is it? If we just look at... Uh, we can't view the stage because the next draw is due. Well, that's annoying. But um, yeah, they, look, they lost in the group stage, but it looks like they didn't do it actually that badly. They lost to Kashima Antlers, Sydney FC was also in their group. Who was the other team in their group? It was uh, Jeonyam Dragons, the Korean side. I can only imagine they got knocked out of this group narrowly. They actually drew a lot of games looking at it here. Struggled to win, got one win against Sydney and then uh, lost one as well against Kashima Antlers and then drew four. It's a little bit disappointing there. And as I mentioned, they got knocked out in the Chinese 
FA Cup on penalties to Beijing in the first, or sorry, the fourth round. But that is the first round that they play in. So that's a little bit disappointing for, for them there. If we look at their transfers, how much money did they spend? This is more for my own curiosity. They spent £9 million in 2018, and they spent no money in 2017. That's one thing that, based off this transfer window in real life, I'm going to be curious to see is kind of how FM portrays the Chinese transfer windows. Because if they keep pulling off deals like Ramirez, uh, Jackson, Martinez, and Guarín, well, the league is going to need uh, to have some tweaks made to it. Either way, guys, Jackson Martinez, he's got one year left of his time here at Guangzhou. We're going to go forward one more year, see how he got on, and then wrap up this simulates for now. Uh, and yeah, I will be back in just a second for the end of 2019. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing our final season review here in this experiment. Okay, guys, so we are back again. It's the end of 2019. Uh, you can see here Jackson Martinez, he's not elected to extend his contract, so he will be leaving on a free. Doesn't look like he's got any move planned just yet. Uh, however... The experienced striker, he's not really declined as a footballer again, you'd have to say. 33 years old now, currently out with a sprained ankle, however. If we look at his history, 14 goals this year, a little bit of a slowdown, a 7.11 average rating in the league as well. In the other competitions, he got 12 in 7 in the kind of cup step games that he played in, and 6 goals in 6 in the continental competitions. Let's see how Guangzhou got on. They didn't win the league, that is last year. They did win the league. They won it convincingly again, but this year his goals weren't quite as important. If we look here, actually, Gao Lin helping on the goal scoring charts this time. Jackson Martinez, he's still got second highest goal scorer in the league, but compared to his previous years, wasn't quite the same calibre of performance. Gao Lin here, the 33 year old Chinese international, uh, somehow scoring more goals than him. Perhaps a little bit of a surprise there. Anyway, if we look at the stats here in the league, was there anything else that stood out here? Guangzhou, they scored the most goals. Not entirely surprising, I guess. Let's have a look at how Guangzhou got on uh, in their schedule, how they got on in their matches. In the Chinese FA Cup, they reached the final and they won the final. They won it 6-1 in the end. A really good performance there. They won the league, of course. However, well, it looks like the Asian Champions League proved another stumbling block for them. Melbourne City winning the competition in 2019. A little bit of a surprise there to see an A-League team winning it. Looking at their group stage, it looks like they won won a few. Get it? They're sort by here, so you can have a better look. Uh, they, lo they won three, drew one, and then lost two. But then they didn't make it into the knockout stages, which the top two teams go through in. So that's really disappointing, really, for them there. Um, they lost to Pohang Steelers and Yokohama. Again, I don't think that's the correct name for that J-League side. But either way, they got knocked out in that competition. And Well, I'll tell you what, if there's anything I'm surprised about in this kind of experiment and simulates, it's just the lack of progress for Guangzhou in the Champions League. I know the club is investing a lot of money in real life and their big aim is to become the big force in Asia. And, well, that simply hasn't happened in this save. You can see Jackson Martin is still captain. Still the key player, but this year, you know, didn't bang in quite as many goals in the league. If we look at his career achievements just here, you can see he won a lot of stuff with Guangzhou, really. If we look at the awards, he got top goalscorer third place, FA Cup top goalscorer. I'm sure you guys can pause if you want to see all the achievements he won, but it's fair to say he did win a fair lot bit, you know, player of the year in the Chinese Super League. Who other bits and pieces in terms of competitions at Guangzhou, they won the league twice, no, three times. He won the Chinese FA Cup a few times. He won the FA Super Cup as well a few times. He didn't do too badly either. He was also involved in uh, the Copa America with Colombia where they finished runners-up in 2019. So that's not too bad, I guess, uh, for the 33-year-old. And they actually lost in the final against Argentina. Did, did he play any role here? Did he come on? He came off in the 61st minute. Didn't have a good game in the final, Jackson Martinez, letting down his nation. But either way, as I mentioned, he would be leaving at the end of this year. I'm not going to sim any further forward because he's no doubt not going to sign a new contract here at Guangzhou because he would have done it by now. But yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this simulator. It's just something a little bit different. I'm going to dabble in these. If you guys enjoy them, if they're received well, we'll do some more. As I mentioned at the start, if you've got suggestions for your own experiment you'd like to see, uh, leave them down in the comments. Let me know what you made of this one. If you did enjoy it, smash the like button. If you didn't enjoy it, dislike it but tell me why you didn't enjoy it give me some suggestions for improvements or i guess don't dislike it just give some feedback i'm going to take it on board particularly with these simulates not everyone's cup of tea but if i can make them appeal to as many people as possible that is fantastic 
Either way, what do I think of the Jackson Martinez transfer? I'm going to be honest, I think he's going to tear apart China. I saw that Tim Cahill got something like 16 goals in 18 games. It was a ludicrous goal scoring uh, sum for Tim Cahill this year for 2015 in China. I think Jackson Martinez is going to score for fun. I know he's struggled at Atletico. But I don't actually think Football Manager is too far off with this one. I think he will score a lot of goals. When players like Wagner Love can score as many goals as they did in China, I think for a 29-year-old Jackson Martinez, it's going to be a pretty easy task, if I'm being honest. But anyway, that wraps up this video from me. As I already mentioned, if you enjoyed, smash the like button. If you are new to my channel and you want to see more like this, of course, subscribe. If you've got any feedback, leave it down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.